And third, I will put up there uh, as women, peace, and security, the role that women have to play in this area. Because when women are oppressed and marginalized, societies are far more dangerous and extremists are much more likely to take hold. The Secretary has stressed the importance that the subjugation of women has as a threat to our own national security and indeed a threat to our common security because the suffering and denial of the rights of women and their oppression and the instability of nations goes hand in hand. I was talking to some of the folks at my table tonight about Afghanistan and it is a classic example in today's world where we are working to recognize the critical difference that women have to play in their country's future in securing it and rebuilding it. And there our development policies are focusing on investing in women and girls education and literacy, accessing income generation projects, uh, working to grow small businesses and working to enable women to access uh, systems of justice which are at a very nascent state. Ten years ago, the UN Security Council adopted a resolution which is commonly referred to as 1325. It recognized that women have a critical role to play in conflict resolution, in peace negotiations, in political transitions, and in post-conflict reconstruction. Elizabeth Shannon is here tonight, and years ago when Hillary Clinton was preparing for her first trip to Northern Ireland, I was on the phone with Elizabeth who was telling me what a critical role women were playing at the community level in Northern Ireland to try to come across that divide, that Catholic-Protestant divide. And it was they who went on to play an absolutely instrumental role, finally in the peace negotiations as well. And so we increasingly recognize, and the Security Council uh, has adopted a resolution to this end, and we are working uh, to ensure that we put together our own national plan, as the Secretary announced at the United Nations a couple of weeks ago, uh, because it's absolutely critical if countries are to stabilize and peace is to be secured and sustained in conflict situations. Nowhere is this more true today than Af in Afghanistan where we recognize the important role that women have to play. There is much discussion about a reintegration process, a reconciliation process, and the critical role uh, in all of those processes uh, going forward. Uh, the United States has been instrumental in enabling women to uh, come to the table, to the peace jurgas, uh, to play an essential role in that process, and when I was just there, Several weeks ago, President Karzai was talking about how, I think he was quite surprised, in fact, he was talking about the fact that the 300 and some woman, women who participated in the recent peace jirga uh, actually were so contributory to the process uh, that as the working groups were voting for how it needs to move forward, each of the working groups uh, that had many conservative tribal chiefs in them uh, many conservative uh, religious types in them all voted uh, as a unit to say that women needed to be part of the process going forward. Uh, it's a very up and down situation. Uh, there is now a high council that's being named. There will be a process in place at the provincial level and at the local level where it ultimately will count the most. Uh, but women are really working in that country uh, to to make their contribution as best they can in these, both the political process uh, and the peace process or the process of resolution uh, as the conflict um, tries to reach some kind of uh, efforts at closure. There were 400 plus women who ran in the recent parliamentary elections uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, they're still not completely resolved, uh, but when you think of the risk
that they went through uh, just to participate as candidates, uh, not to mention the risk that they go through just to vote, uh, but the extraordinary effort it took uh, to be a candidate, to, to participate in the process. Uh, there were posters all over that country. Uh, it, in many ways, is a manifestation of the progress that they have made and they need to continue to make. Uh, this morning, I met with the uh, Afghan foreign minister uh, who was in Washington for talks, and he was describing uh, some of the kinds of acts of courage that he saw firsthand in this last election uh, that women were taking uh, to be able to participate uh, in a democracy as new uh, as it was. So if a sustainable peace uh, is to take hold in Afghanistan, women must play an equal role in shaping that, that possibility. Otherwise, any potential that exists uh, will indeed be subverted if they are not participating and are relegated to the margins. On one of my last trips there, I was meeting with a group of Afghan women one night, and um, they were participating in a discussion. They wanted to uh, describe some of the progress they had made, some of the challenges they still confront. And one of them started by saying, please, please do not look at us as victims. Look at us as the leaders that we are. And I have not been able to get her out of my mind since, because there are indeed so many women leaders like the women in Afghanistan, who but for the chance, who but to be taken seriously, uh, can make such an extraordinary, important contribution uh, to the future of their country. Our global challenges are so numerous but in advancing women, we can make giant steps for progress that will benefit not only the women, but men and women, boys and girls everywhere. So I thank you for all that you do through this great organization uh, to contribute to bettering relations, to contribute to investing in the kinds of things that will make a difference for lasting peace and prosperity. I thank you for this wonderful award, and I look forward to hearing more about the extraordinary things ahead for World Boston and for all that you do. So thank you very much. Thank you.